Hello. Hello. Yes. Christian Prince. Yes, you are live on air. Okay. Um. Well, I'm live here too, and I just want to call you to tell you my experience and that I was Muslim. Okay. And I want everyone to know what I discovered for Islam. So first of all, I want to say that I converted to Islam. I come from a very, very broken uh, family. Okay. I was a college student and I became homeless, right? And happened that in my university, there was a big Muslim community. I, you know, they talk nice to me, they sugarcoat things like usual. And I decided to convert because I said, okay, well, they're really nice. I, these are the only nice people that I have been around with. And I see that whatever they tell me, I was thinking it makes sense because they were saying, oh, we believe in Jesus Christ. And if, oh, we love Jesus, we respect Jesus. And Islam is a religion of peace. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so I took Shahada. I want to admit publicly that I didn't. I took it without me having zero understanding what is Islam. I just went outside and jumped and said, okay, I'll, I say the Shahada. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout time, I noticed that when I was when I, when I became Muslim, everyone was very nice to me. Everyone wanted me to pray for them. Everyone uh, was trying to help me. Everyone. And from, it was all sugars and rainbows until... I started, you know, praying at the mosque. People who come and fix my hair, hamstrings a lot, mm -hmm. and say, "No, you're praying wrong," or what, or watching how every step I make, or the clothes I wear, and it was so uncomfortable at the beginning, right? Later on, um, I decided. Well, one of my friends, she hosts me in her house, but. And her mom is Islamic scholar. She's an Islamic scholar. And no scholar, sorry. It's more like an Islamic school professor. Mm -hmm. So, and that she's from the Middle East, right. But I, I never, as I say, I never had any experience or contact with any Muslim people. So they tell me Islam, but the way that they tell me Islam was very, very aggressive. I didn't... I, you know, I'm, I'm from Latin America. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say I'm Latina. And in my culture, of course, it's very natural to shake hands, to greet by the kids. So it, they told me, they stopped me, and it's like, no, that's wrong. And I felt really bad, so how is that wrong? But they, even, uh, they would just point me out things that I was doing wrong without telling me the reason. And I would feel bad because how can I, this is when, when I started to question things because I see how can just a simple hand shake gesture will arouse any attraction between the opposite gender, right? Mm -hmm. Even for a job interview, no, you cannot. I ask, uh, there's a lot of uh, Muslim scholars who come to my university and do Holocaust and teach Islam. And I ask, okay, so how is it wrong to shake hands if you don't have a bad intention? And they told me an answer, like a solid answer. So from there on, what, I what, think what was started, the, what was the answer? Oh, they said, oh, it's because we don't we don't mix with the other gender. I said, but why? Is that because Allah knows best, and we know we're not supposed to be be with them because we can you don't know each other's heart. So it can arouse attraction. But if you think about it, how can just shaking hands at, uh, arise attraction to another person? Like, I'm just greeting the person, right? Mm -hmm. So from there on, I started like getting like a bad feeling, but I, I didn't listen to my gut, so I just went on. I just went on and tried to learn. I actually was really trying very hard to learn Islam, to pray, to memorize Quran and to understand what Islam was, because I, everyone around my environment was very religious, very, very religious. And I, I wanted to be that way, like, you know, and uh, for, for example, they would tell me, you have to memorize Quran because when you die, they're gonna ask you who's your prophet. 
uh, what you believe on. They're going to tell me to recite the Shahada. And they told me to that I have to memorize Quran. And then I started asking myself, well, how am I going to memorize something I can barely understand? But, you know, like, sometimes I would, I would do, I would do something and question myself. But as I said, I wouldn't, I didn't follow my God this time until I actually started reading the Quran. And when I started reading the Quran, <clears throat> I got very, very shocked because I would say, why, like, is this really true? So I went and I asked many texts, many scholars about that. And they would be, they would say that, oh, you're, you're not understanding Arabic. You need to understand the context. You need to, 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 to learn Arabic because it's classic plus Arabic. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you, Christian friends, something. How can people teach Islam or want to do, uh, uh, they want to da do dawah on, a, not on converts if they say that Arabic is a really high level language that no one can understand? How can they try to teach something that is high level to people that barely can speak Arabic? That's my question. Well, you know, what they say partly is true. Nobody can understand. The Quran is a very stupid book, you know. So if we give the Muslims a verse in the Quran, and we ask them what this verse mean, you will see they have a thousand interpretation, if not a million. So how a language which is sent by Allah to guide us, they themselves cannot understand and they cannot have the same interpretation for, you know, what, what, is, the, what is the message there? So the Quran is a very stupid book made by a very stupid writer. And because of that, uh, there's no doesn't make sense actually if I go to the comment <clears throat> there's a Muslim he posted in the comment let me see if I can find it in the previous video uh, he said how you say in the chapter of Maryam Mary chapter 19 uh, he said how the how you say that the Quran uh, is not connected you know doesn't make sense the verse before and the verse after have nothing to do with it so he mentioned that uh, uh, the verse of uh, and the chapter of Mary as an example, all of it is about Mary. But is it true? If we go right now to the chapter of Mary, we will find that the part about Mary is just little. The most of the part have nothing to do with Mary. You know, here we go. This is about Mary. This is about Mary. This is about Mary, no, you know. And then what is this? This is about Mary. This is about Mary. This is about, uh, no. And then here he speaks a little bit about Mary, and then he jump. He starts speaking about things have nothing to do with Mary and have nothing to do with the teaching of Christ. You know, like who is the one is you know who who, uh, uh, who is the one is talking here? So in 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 the Quran there is no connection uh, between between verses, and there is no connection between a verse and the one after it. Uh, you know, he talking about Mary. Okay, here we jump to Moses, and then we jump to to, uh, to Aaron. Why? Because Muhammad he think that Aaron is the uh, is the uncle of uh, of Isa, and who is Isa? We do not even know who is this name. So the Quran is a very stupid book, and this is why the Muslim they try to fix the Quran. So when the Quran says he found the sun set in murky water, the Muslim they have to add words to the verse in order to fix it. So they say it appeared to Alexander the Great that the sun set in murky, but uh, Allah never said it appeared to him. He said he found it. So in order to fix stupidity, they have to fix the language, and they have to add words. So how the Quran is an amazing book, high level of language, when the Quran is given wrong meaning, a wrong. Uh, purpose of it you know what I mean um, I understand I understand and this is my question like why they even try to do that one? like if, if they know that there's something's wrong and they claim that the translation it's inaccurate how in the heck they try to still convert people into Islam like that's, well, that's you know my... you see it's like you're asking the Satan why he's trying to fool you that doesn't make sense so you should know that this is a satanic religion and a person who follow it, he is possessed with the devil. So he has a duty, he's a, they're a prophet. They, they have videos about a guy, a Muslim guy who made a Jew. I, I believe this is a fabricated story, but that Sheikh is a proud about it in YouTube. So he said, this is how we can, you know, this is the, look how, how smart our brother here. So there's, he said, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a Jewish guy, he's a neighbor to a Muslim. 
the Muslim guy, he keeps saying to him, why you don't convert to Islam? Convert to Islam. Islam is better for you, you know, etc. So the Jewish guy, he said, you know him, you know what, I don't really mind converting to Islam, but I like to smoke and I like to drink. The Muslim guy said to him, who told you you cannot do smoke and drink? You can. The Jewish guy, he said, really? He said, yeah, just say Shahada. Say Shahada. The Jewish guy, he said Shahada, and he became a Muslim. Now, the Muslim, he grabbed a cigarette to smoke. The Muslim, he said to him, you cannot smoke. The, the guy, he said to him, but you told me I can. He said, yeah, I said that to you before you said Shahada. <laughs> so they are saying that this guy, the Muslim guy, he tricked the Jewish guy to save him. He lied to him to save him. This is a good lie. Islam without lies dies. So they justify their lies by saying that we lie to save the people. We enslave you to save you. You know? So if we go actually here in the in the in the hadith, let me show you this in the hadith. Mm -hmm. If you ask a Muslim why you attack people and nations and enslave them and take them as sex slaves, why you do that? They say to you the answer in what the Prophet said. Okay. Read carefully. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophets are saying, God charmed with people who will enter paradise in chains. They will enter heaven in chains? Why they will enter heaven and they have a chains? Doesn't make sense. We have to search more. We go down a little bit, we find. Okay. Muhammad, he said to the Muslims, speaking to the Arab, you are the best of people ever raised up for the for between two brackets for the benefit of mankind. This is Quran, chapter 3, verse 110. And then Muhammad explained that verse. You see, if you go on YouTube, all Muslims, they say, this is, you see, the Quran says that the best of us is the one who is the best for mankind. This is what it says. But they will not say to you that this is about slaving and raping women of other nations read carefully he said the best of mankind of those who bring them with the chain around their necks till they embrace islam and there thereby okay. save them from eternal punishment and hellfire so muhammad he told the muslims that enslaving others is a duty of charity are you yeah, this is the I'm showing the reference in front of you. You know, I'm, I, we don't say things without proof. Oh my God! Yeah. Okay, so this is just make it even worse. Yeah. So it, those Muslims, because now you don't live in in the in the land of Islam, they are not raping you and they are not taking you as a slave. But if you are, if if Al Qaeda control, let's say you are a Mexican, I don't know where are you from, but let's say you are a Mexican and the Muslims took over Mexico and they want to practice a true Islam. And they invade your country they can take you out rape you and this is the quran proving that all over and enslaving you is part of the duty of the muslim it's an obligation is not even a choice as you see muhammad praising the muslims and allah praising the muslims saying you are the best of mankind why because you enslave others because by enslaving them you force them to convert to islam Oh and, by, and by the way, even those who convert to Islam, Muhammad, he refused to free them, most of them. As an example, Bilal, he was a slave of Muhammad, and Muhammad did not free him. Muhammad, he died, and still Bilal is a slave. So, so he, Bilal was never free? According to some Muslims, they claim that he was freed by Abu Bakr later. But the reference says that Bilal, he came to Abu Bakr, and he says to him, If you bought me for the sake of Allah, will you free me for the sake of Allah? So obviously Bilal was begging, you know, for his freedom, and Muhammad never freed him. Okay, so how can how can people believe that this cult then, if, if it's a duty for enslaving people, how can everyone of Muslims believe this is a cult from God? What? I'm sorry. But well, like, this, this is what happened to you too. You are, you see, don't be offended with what I, what I will say. You know, always I like to be honest. You were with them in the same jar. You are the same. How you believe yeah. in such a garbage, you know? Sorry to say that to you. So no, no, you, you've been, you've been mean, driven. You see, you, you, actually, your guilt is bigger than their guilt. Sorry to say so. Why? Because, okay, you were homeless, no problem. You were in need, no problem. 
and life was tough on you, I understand. But to convert to a religion, you do not know what it is, how that can happen. Exactly. You know, I was desperate. I was like, basically, they. Re I really appreciate them. I don't. I don't. I don't have anything against them. They are really nice. As, really nice as people. But my concern is these things, like just like something like this, like you mentioned. When I saw that Aisha uh, got married with the prophet, and the prophet was really old, like he was 55 or 56, not sure how, and she was a little girl. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, there's even a, a, a hadith that says that she was still playing with her dolls. Yes. That's disturbing. Yeah. Really disturbing to think about that. And then uh, my friends and other uh, scholars, they excuse themselves saying, oh, but at that time, at that time, the girls are already mature. They they ready for marriage. Those are other times. Those are uh. She was already old. She was like her body was developed because she's in the desert. It's really hot environment. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm sorry, but I I don't know. Like I, that's uh, in that in that point, I said, all right, there, there's something wrong. You know. You see, first of all. The, the claim of she is in the desert. Well, now we have girls who live in the desert in Saudi Arabia and they are six years old. They are the same as a girl who live in New York. They are still little girls. So this is a lie and nothing changed. Actually, now, isn't it they say there's a global warming, which means now it's more hot? <laughs> so girls, they have, like, are we talking about, talking about eggplant and the eggplant will grow faster in a warm area? That is a stupid statement, you know? This is a human being. He have a stages. He grow old by days, not by uh, being exposed to the sunlight. We are not plants. So this is a false answer for a false cult to protect a predator, a sexual predator for children. And until now, according to Islam, there's no age limit for how Muslim he can marry. Actually, you can watch my videos. It's in YouTube. Search for sex with infant debate oh. with infant. The Muslims in their book, they say that it's forbidden for a Muslim to have intercourse with an infant. It's forbidden. However, he can excuse my language. He can put his private part between her legs, but he don't enter. Infant. What? One day old. Go watch the video. Go watch it. You know, it's in the YouTube. Just search for it. You know. Of course. And the Muslim, he was debating, and we are showing the reference in the screen, and we can show it right now. So this is an extreme, bad, ugly, disgusting cult. And the only way to defend this cult is to lie. And now they have articles saying that Aisha, she was 18. But all of us, we know that Aisha, when Muhammad died, she was going through 18. She's not 18 yet. So Muhammad, he married Aisha after he died. So in order to avoid the, 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 the problem, they start making false article about the age of Aisha. But Aisha herself, I mean, look at this. Is it Aisha saying I was six years old? <laughs> you know, she is the wife. She is the one who was with the Muhammad. So she was six years old. She became a wife. According to Aisha, by the age of nine, he did intercourse. But between six and nine, he was molesting her. This oh, is how I... bad this man is. He is a criminal. I, I, I'm sorry, but like, I, it's, it's even more, more even disturbing about listening to, to this. I mean, but yeah, and I want to, okay, so I want to continue. All thank right. you so much for your reference. And thank you, no, like, I want to say that, yes, I was a stupid and I admitted uh, of going, joining something without further research. But you know, when people is vulnerable, they believe on anything. And, and everything or they like any is a slight spark of hope you know they they go for it mm -hmm. right and thank god you know i i did well like i ended up uh, finding a job after i graduated with my engineering degree mm -hmm. and uh everything went well uh thank god but um in the process of me like when i still had those questions i I met someone and I we decided to get married. He's Arab from the Middle East, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where we got married and everything. I was still a Muslim. In this time, I want to say I was still a Muslim. And, I, you know, he actually decided, he said, oh, my God, I, I, I love you. And, you know, it's better for me to marry you because I always, I wanted to marry a girl to convert her, convert her to Islam. But it's even easier because you're already Muslim. So... 
I guess he, he liked the idea of me being a, con- a convert to Islam so he could teach me Islam. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> uh, so we got married and everything. And, you know, here I am. I'm, I'm still married to him. But uh, I had an accident and uh, we had a very, very bad accident. And in that accident, I, he got really bad and I also got really hurt. And, uh, and uh, I was, uh, I don't know what happened. So something changed my life inside the day. And I thought that I was really going to die. And I, I really thought that it was the end for me. And all of a sudden I say, no, <laughs> I, 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 I turn myself, I don't know how, but I turn myself back to Jesus again, to Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And I say, please, I give my life to you. Like, I, I really don't want to die. And I don't, and I hope that nothing happens to, to him, to my husband. And uh, can you believe that after I pray that, like, I got better, we got better, and he got out of, uh, of uh, he was in an in intensive care. And he got out of intensive care. Okay. So I pray to Jesus and I say, what is going on? You know? And um, he felt also, he he fell out of status in his visa because he's from obviously the Middle East. And the lawyer told me, he, I went and he told me, he violated the conditions. It's most likely that he will get deported. And again, I went I turned myself to Jesus and I said, please, please don't take him away from me. I, even though he's Muslim, but I put his life in your, in your hands and I put my life in your hands. But please make our situation better. From there on, I felt a very, very peace in my heart, in my, in my head. Because I want to tell you this, even when I was Muslim, I'll pray 10,000 rakats, I'll pray at night, I'll go to the mosque, and I was still feeling disturbed in my soul. I was not feeling in peace, I wasn't feeling calm. I, I had, there was something missing in my life. There was, uh, I was, I had no peace whatsoever, Christian Prince. Mm-hmm. But after the accident happened, and after I prayed, believe me, that peace came back. And I want to tell you that my husband, by the grace of Jesus Christ, he has now a, a, res, a permanent resident card. In the interview, like he didn't know, he, like the interview went bad, but I stay up praying and reading the Bible before the interview. And the same day after the, even though the interview went like crap, but we got approved. And he even, he told me, how did this even happen? How did this even happen? But I can tell you that me putting my life and my hands in Jesus Christ was the best, best thing that I could ever do. I was blind. I don't, I didn't have any peace. But after I started watching your videos, Apostate Prophet and David Woods, I start having a much clearer understanding of what I got myself into. And today I regret, I regret deeply of having, putting myself in the situation. But I'm my, I think that everything happens for a reason. And I want to say thank you because you're doing an amazing job and you're letting people to open their minds and their hearts and their brain. Right now, my d- duty, and well, I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to educate myself. I'm trying to learn more because I would love my husband to see one day the, the, the light of Jesus Christ. Because I, it, maybe that's too much for me to ask, but it's a hard, it's a hard task. Why, why you I, don't ask your husband to call me or to speak to me right now? Because I, I already told him. He, I have already uh, talked to him and I say, if you think because he, talk, he tells me that you are a liar, that you're lying in the mouth of Islam, mm-hmm. that you and, and at first I told him, okay, because he was saying, okay, uh, David Woods and Apostle Prophet, they don't know Arabic. How can they be talking about this stuff? So okay. I said, okay, well, they're Arabic, right? But then when I, told, when I told him about you, he said, no, he's lying. He's a liar and he, 
he just um he wants he's an enemy of islam and i said okay if you believe that islam has the absolute truth and it's the right religion why you don't face them why you don't prove him that islam it's the right religion he said he's not worth my time so i was like okay so you're scared of him okay like, why not stop stop you... stop please hold on hey guys did you hear what you said there's a guy in the chat he is saying that fifi he got me busted and he mentioned imam murra or whatever i say to all those abdul this lady who was an ex-muslim she just said to you something very important as long as i did lie call me and show me the lie and then record it and then spread it around and let people laugh why you don't face me with my lies how come you are so good and show that be muslims that i'm lying in a video you make debating yourself and you win for sure you will <laughs> Muslims support you whatever you say so why they don't dare to call me and prove me that i am a liar i'm here i just said who wanna call me and this lady she called me i do not know her any muslim can call me so you have muslim make tons of videos about me lying choose any of them and call me right now and either we laugh at you and at them or people will laugh at me like we have this guy his name is arman views arman how are you Arman? call me right now and let us talk about imam Murah. people will die laughing at you do you dare you don't dare you're a potato son of muta <laughs> muta boy so we are street boys they don't dare to face this is what we are saying you see look at the title why muslims avoid debating arab christian because all what they say here will prove it to be false otherwise trust me they will be lined up to call me and to get me busted but because they know that they are no match they knew that they have nothing they are bankrupt they don't dare to call me and in the same time uh we have uh, this guy who is saying fifi why you don't ask fifi to let me call him i will call him right now and he can choose any of the lies I say to talk about it. Anyone. We can start from uh, lie number one. <laughs> do, he, do they dare? So they are a bunch of kids, and you Muslims are desperate. And here we go. Number one lie, let me remind you. Your sister, she said that Aisha, she was not, she was a, she was a growing woman. She had her menstruation already. And we showed in the video and in the hadith that this is absolutely a lie. Because at the age of 14, still she didn't have her period. So who is the one who lie? The sun set in murky water. Oh, it doesn't say that, CP. It appeared to Zulqurnayn that it is sitting in murky water. And then this Abdul, he just, this is why they are so angry from me. They say this is the correct hadith apostate prophet which one which one this one let me show it to you <laughs> sorry I will, I, will let, I will let you stay with me a little bit you know okay this is the correct hadith okay okay what is the correct hadith what is the one you know uh, uh, you know uh, 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 this is this is the correct one Okay, this is the one explain Islam for us. Yes, I agree with this hadith. This is absolutely the authentic hadith. Go and watch the video and die laughing. And what is the authentic hadith which the, the, the those little girls they agree with? They say that Allah Prophet said to Abu Dhar, Do you know where the sun set? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best for sure. They associate the name of their prophet and the knowledge of their God with the knowledge of Muhammad. They are mushrikeen kuffar. He said it goes and prostrate underneath Allah throne and Susu and Mimi and Fifi they say yes this is correct we agree with that but this is what really this is this is alone is enough to prove it's time to be shish kebab as long as they agree all of them about it that this is authentic and this is a true and this is the hadith which is the, telling the truth you're a prophet teach that the sun goes every day from the east to the west and sleep and the excuse my language enter the butt of Allah and then the son will ask Allah for permission to go back. And then Allah, when they will refuse, because this is the judgment day time, and he will say to the son, go back where you came from. So who is the one is lying? Abdul, who is the one is lying? Now you cannot say they don't agree. They said they agree with this hadith. And the video is there. They agree with it. They said, yes, this is the authentic hadith. Here the prophet, peace be upon him, he respond to you. 
<laughs> you respond to us? <laughs> Absolutely. I want, I want to ask <laughs> Go ahead, baby. Go ahead, sorry. Huh? So I was making the comparison of Mohammed, right? Uh, my understanding is that he's a caravan <clears throat> robber. He had multiple wives. He was asking for zakat. Uh, not zakat, sorry. Um, uh, jizya. Jizya. Mm -hmm. And uh, those, these characteristics, if you think about it, oh, he killed people that went against him. Okay, if you think about it, these characteristics, I put it, I put Mohammed and then I compare it to, uh, to a cartel leader. That's what they do. They like women. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They go against uh, whoever that kills them. And in and, and Latin American countries, what they do is uh, they uh, they ask for uh, to business uh, for tax protection money. Right. This is, and not, if you yeah. don't give it to them, you kill them. So that's what a cartel leader does, right? Actually, the mafia, the word mafia. A mafia. So mafia, the, the cartel word mafia leader, is coming from Islam. The word mafia, maybe you do not know. When the Muslims occupy part of Europe, and they would draw when they lost the war then the criminals they took over the business of the muslims so they come to the stores and they say the same you used to pay to the muslims you have to pay us to protect you the muslims they force you to pay otherwise pay or die so the mafia started with islam even the word mafia is an islamic the word assassination is coming from islam this is coming from the word from from the person his name is hassan al hashash He's a person who built the castle and he take he give uh, drugs to the muslims and then he send them he you know he sent a letter to the princes or you know rich people saying pay me or die and if you don't pay him he will send one of his addicted to assassinate the person because he refused to, to pay this is exactly islam today islam today convert or we die or you die we will send you a person to stab you just yesterday a, a, a somalian person he stabbed four italian women and a, a child he is six years old go go search the news so this is islam islam is a religion of assassination it is a cult it is about sex and if we ask muslims and those who they are proud about their prophet if we go in the Quran right now, we will find that Allah, he made a chapter or a verse in the Quran about the private part of Muhammad and how to make him happy. And this is only a privilege to the Prophet. And what is the privilege saying? That Muhammad, he can sleep with all those women. In the top of that, any woman she can offer herself to the Prophet to sleep with him. What does this have to do with God? A person already have tons of wives and he have tons of sex slaves. Why he need? women to offer themselves and those women if we go and read the interpretation it says that if a prophet his eyes fall into a woman and even if she is married her, her husband must divorce her immediately what kind of a prophet this prophet is if his eyes fall into a woman like now you are married to this muslim guy right mm -hmm. so if muhammad come to your house and he like you your husband must divorce you so the prophet he can have you. And trust me, your husband what? will he, not say bad words, please. Oh, uh, sorry. And sorry, your no, and your husband and your husband he will be do, he will do it happily. He will do it happily and tell him tell your husband, what about you call this guy and ask him to challenge him to show us what he just said about if if Muhammad he saw me, you have to divorce me so he can have me. Tell him why you don't dare to, just ask him show us on the screen don't debate don't debate the guy tell him i challenge you to show me that the prophet he's he, you know he uh, uh, don't teach that and the prophet he do that actually he did that to his own son he oh, went to the God. son that's his own son he flirted with the wife and all of this is in their books every single word we just said it is in their books and any muslim can call me and prove it wrong I will give you a few minutes to, to finish your story, uh, my, okay. uh, my yeah. friend, and Thank we you continue. So much. Okay. And I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to curse. It's just that I, the it's press, right. I, I was very shocked to say, I mean, <laughs> honestly, like, I, it's horrendous. Like, I have no even words to say, but like, how can, like, that, that, how can that even be called a religion? Like, how can, <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, any Muslim is willing to give their wives to the husband just because he says so. Please tell me where is the the spirituality, the the God part in there. 
that does that's that's not oh my god i'm so christian please i'm, well, I'm you know, even you know what I, I, I will do something i will send you a link in arabic and i want you to tell him can you read it for i for me Please, please, send that to me, please. <laughs> yeah, uh, tell him, are you proud about your prophet? And by the way, you do not need him to translate because you can use Google Translation. You know what I mean? You do not need him okay. because if he, he tried to lie to you and says it doesn't say that, get him busted. Say, hey, listen, let us use Google Translation and this is your official website. I can give it to you. Actually, let me give it to you from the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So he will not say, oh, this is a website. Anyone can make a website. This is government website. Let us, let us go there. Here we go. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And this is the link. I will give it to you in Skype. Thank you. Let me go to the chat. After you finish, you will see it in the chat there. Okay, here we go. And now I will say thank you for calling us. And I will be waiting for your husband, tell him be a man. And I advise you, my, my friend, this person, uh, sooner or later, he will divorce you and he will find a new wife. Just wait. Time will come. This is because as long as he is a Muslim, this is what Muslims do. When the woman, she gets a little bit older, she gave him some kids. She got a little bit choppy. He go and find a brand new wife in the Middle East. As simple as that. I'm just telling the truth. Even their prophet, he said, why you marry a previously married woman? Why you marry a woman, she is not a child. And I can show you the reference right now. Muhammad, he encouraged them to marry children who they are virgins, so they can be amused by them and they have fun. This is the reference in the front of us. You see, this is the story. A man who married a woman previously married, or let us say she is not a virgin. So according to Muhammad, the correct thing to do is to go and find a little child. She is a baby and to marry her and have sex with her. And here you see actually, because if you say to, to you, oh, it doesn't say she is a little girl. It says that. It says, the guy, he said, he answered the prophet, he says, the reason I did not marry a child, a young daughter, a young girl, because I want the women to take care of my orphans. My brother, he died, and I needed a woman who should take care of, take care of them, not a, a girl like them. <gasps> and let me give you the reference too for this one, so you can show it to your so-called husband you know by the way uh, i don't know you said you are a christian a christian um, cannot a christian cannot marry non-christian i'm sorry by the way i want to say that i i had no idea about that uh because i was catholic uh, my black girl is catholic hmm. but now i'm i'm christian so i i didn't even have i'm not asking you to divorce it. the guy i'm saying according to the bible a christian woman she cannot marry a christian a, a non-christian however you left the faith, and when you married him, you were not a Christian. So, you know, that can let, let it go. But this is, in Christianity, this is not married, because most times they don't marry. Most times they have sex contract. It's called nikah. Nikah means the F word. So you sign a contract that he can F, excuse my language. He did not sign a contract he can marry. There is no marriage in Islam. This is why they are encouraged to start with two, and the three, and four. And actually, according to some, there is no limit. But if you could not do that, you go for one, which means Islam did not say you start having sex with one as a wife. Islam start with having sex with two and three and four, etc. And if you could not do all of those, then you go to the bankruptcy, which means you sleep with one only. That is not marriage. A person, a God who, who a person who believe that he should, he can have many, many women, obviously he don't believe in marriage. The, the more that you tell me about this, the more it's disturbing, it's sick it gets. It's... Well, I'm here to share the truth with you. You know, I don't want to, to, you to disturb your life as a person married <laughs> to this person. Maybe he's a, maybe, you know, but you see what from what you said to me, uh, he sounds like he is, uh, uh, he is, you know, he is not e decent with you because 
if he is saying Christian Prince is lying, tell him, can you show me the lie? I will call him, record him. He don't call me, record him, huh? record him. Say, hey, Christian Prince, you lie about this. You call me, you play his voice. We open it and we see who's lying. Okay. You know, Sounds and let us good. see <laughs> who's lying. All right. Thank you for calling me and Thank God you bless so you much. and I we pray for you. Before that, before you end the call, please keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome. And we need more people like you in this world. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. -bye. Mm-hmm.